what are these trigrams? Trigrams are symbols made up of three lines, either solid or dashed lines, and there are eight of them. So let me draw some of these out for you and we can start talking about them. Each one of the trigrams corresponds to an element, a color, family member, a direction, you name it, and it corresponds to it. For us as Taekwondo practitioners, uh, in the beginning, as color belts, all we really care about is the element that it corresponds to. The one I just drew, which is three solid lines, corresponds to heaven. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what this heaven means in, in a bit, and it's not the angels with wings uh, sort of heaven. The second trigram corresponds to lake. Actually, it really corresponds to a bog uh, or a body of uh, still water as opposed to a lake. But uh, the translation from Korean into English is a little uh, iffy. There's, it's actually somewhere between, say, a bog and the lake. The next trigram. corresponds to fire, and this is going to be uh, an important trigram that I'm going to be talking about in just a second. The next trigram corresponds to thunder. trigrams, and as I said, they're made up of solid and dashed lines. So what are these solid and dashed lines? Well, most of you are familiar with this symbol. This is a Taoist symbol, and in Chinese it's called a yin and yang symbol. Half of this symbol is black, and the other half is white, and the black side has a little spot of white in it, and the white side has a little spot of black in it. The black side being the yin side, and the white side being the yang side. Uh, the Taoists that created this symbol believe that um, the white side being purity or yang, uh, that it cannot exist. 100% is yang. It always has to have a little bit of yin in it, hence the black dot. And the yin side always has to have a little bit of yang in it. Now, the Koreans use a slightly different version of this symbol. They use a blue and red version of it with no dots. And I'll explain why that is in just a second. So the Korean version of this looks something like this. Now, the reason that they use blue and red instead of white and black with the dots is evident from what I drew before, these trigrams. So if we take a look at the water trigram and the fire trigram, you can see from the fire trigram that the solid lines represent yang. And from now on, I'll use the Korean word with yang. And the dashed lines represent um, which is yin. So if you look at the if you look at the fire trigram right here, you can see that it's the two, the top and the bottom line are yang, and there's a little bit of um in the middle. So that would correspond to the white portion of the Chinese uh, version of the yin and yang symbol. If you look at the water, you can see that the top. 
top and bottom are um, and there's a little bit of yang in the middle. So they took these two trigrams and used those to represent uh, the um and yang symbol as opposed to the white and black with the dots. Originally, this symbol, before it was used in Korea or China, was actually the two trigrams bent together. So originally, it looked something like this. important 
trigrams, and therefore, based on the trigrams, are the two most important ticket forms. Three and six, again, based on the trigrams, are the second most important ticket forms. And the remainder, two, four, five, and seven, are the third most important ticket forms. So, what does all this mean for us as Taekwondo practitioners? Well, a lot of people approach the ticket forms just from the physical side. They get up, they do the physical motions, they sit back down. And as a yellow belt, green belt, that might be absolutely fine. However, it's very important that eventually the mental component starts to become important within the form. Uh, one of my instructors a long time ago had a student that was testing for first gun, first degree black belt. He had eight pieces of paper with the elements written on them. And he gave them to a couple people in the audience. And he told the student to do one of the ticket forms. And then they had to pick a card out of the stack that that ticket form corresponded to. I believe the student did fire first. And the people actually said, that looks like fire to me. And they pulled a fire card out. So it's very important that the form portrays the mental aspect that it's supposed to. These forms were designed with that in mind. They weren't designed just as a series of physical motions. So with that being said, once we know all eight ticket forms, again, based on these trigrams, they should be done as one form with basically eight parts. And a lot of people, when they do that, they simply practice ticket one through eight in order. And that's not the way you're supposed to do it. And this is why, because you can't just do them in the order of one to eight. If you did, you'd be doing three yang forms, then an um form, then a yang form, and then the rest would be um forms. There has to be some sort of a balance. That's, if you look at the trigrams, all the trigrams together as a whole are in balance. So the forms also have to be in balance. So with that being said, um, there's a way of looking at how to go through these, these uh, take it forms the correct way based on the trigrams. So as I said before, the two most important forms were take it number one and take it number eight. The second most important forms were three and six. And the third most important forms were two and five. four, and seven. All right, so if you notice I've stacked them. The left side is all yang forms. The right side is all um forms. So this is how it works. You're going to use this as a way of finding uh, the, the order in which to do these parts of the take-up forms when you do them as one big long form. You can start at either take-up one or eight. It doesn't matter as long as it's one of the two uh, most important forms. And what you're going to do is if you start at 1, for example, you're going to go to 8 next. If you start at 8, you're going to go to 1 next. So the idea is, is you're going to start at either 1 or 8, and you have to finish the level that you're on before you move down. So basically, let me draw, uh, let me draw a line in here. So it's a slightly different color. All right, so we have the three levels. Everything above that line is level one. Then we have what's in between those lines, which is level two, and then the line is level three. So we have to finish up everything in level one before we go on to level two. So if I start with one, I have to do eight. If I start with eight, I have to do one next. So then, once that level's finished, I drop down to the next level. And you have to alternate between yang and um. So if I did one eight, I have to drop down a level, and I have to go over to yang. So I would go from 8 to 3. If I went 8, 1, I would then have to go to 6. Once I'm on level 2, I have to finish all of level 2 before 
we start at 1, we have to do 1, 8, 3, 6. If we start at 8, we have to do 8, 1, 6, 3. There's no choice at all in that. But now that we've finished level 2, we actually have options. So when I'm at, for example, take at number 3, I have two options. I can go to 4 or I can go to 7. Because it doesn't matter because both 4 or 7 have the same importance level with regards to the trigrams. If I'm at number 6, I can go to either 2 or I can go to 5. At this point, I, as long as I finish all the forms on level 3 and alternate between um and yang, it doesn't matter the order in which I go in. So if I was at 6, I could go to 2, and then I could go to 4, or I could go from 2 to 7. And the same thing applies with ticket number four. So the idea is, is we start at either one or eight, and we work our way down the levels, finishing every form in the level up before we move to the next level, always alternating between um and yang. So how many different ways are there to do this? There's eight different ways. And we can use this to write out the eight, eight different ways. For example, we could go... 1, 8, 3, 6, 2, 4, 5, 7. We could go 1, 8, 3, 6. Uh, instead of going to 2, we could go to 5, 7, 2, 4, and so on. And if you go through this, you'll actually come up with eight possible arrangements of the ticket forms. Now, one more thing before we finish up. Out of these eight arrangements, we actually have... Uh, Four arrangements that are somewhat um uh, themed. Not that they are that balanced, but they just have that like quality to them. And those would be the forms, the series that start with ticket eight. We also have four series of the ticket forms that start with ticket number one, and this would have a like a, a yang flavor to them. Remember, when we're doing this, when we're going through these forms, for example, let's just do my favorite, which is 1, 8, 3, 6, 2, 4, 5, 7. And eventually, all of you will have a favorite as well. Uh, this starts with take at number 1, so it has so much, somewhat of a yang, a yang flavor to it. Uh, in between each of these forms, there is absolutely no chumbi. So at the end of ticket number one, for example, I would be stepping forward and punching. I would immediately turn around uh, and start ticket number eight with no chimbi in between. Remember, all of our ticket forms should start and end in the same place. So when we're finished with this entire sequence, we should end where we started from. Until next week, this has been the Video Dojong.